It's never too early to talk NBA free agency, and there are some big names that teams are going to try to sign next summer in 2018. This past year's offseason was pretty wild, with multiple All-Stars finding new NBA homes, and there's going to be more All-Stars looking to secure a long-term contract in 2018. These 10 free agents on the list are going to generate the most news, I think. Even if a few of the guys on this list are going to stay on their team, it definitely impacts what their future roster is going to be. Lots of things can change from when I upload this video to next summer. We still need the season to play out first. This is in no order, just 10 NBA free agents that are going to be all over next summer's NBA offseason news cycle. As always, if you like NBA stories and news, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. First on the list, we got Isaiah Thomas. What a year from IT, 28.9 points per game, multiple clutch performances that helped Boston earn the first seed and get to the conference finals. One of the best finishers in the league and he's only 5'9". Isaiah lives off proving critics wrong and now being traded by his team for Kyrie Irving, I'm sure he's ready to prove some more people wrong again. IT believes he is a max player, but even before the hip injury news, it's hard to pick which team is going to give out max money for a 5'9 point guard. Isaiah sometimes lacks effort on defense, but his main problem is he's just too small to become a quality NBA defender. It's just that simple. Being short is a major issue on defense when every NBA guard is over six foot two. There's one scenario I can imagine happening if Cleveland season does not go well and LeBron decides to leave. Maybe the Cavs front office gives Isaiah max money next summer, so Cleveland is at least a playoff team for the next few years. It gives fans something to root for and brings them to the arena. This is a tough one for me though. What team do you guys see Isaiah signing with? John Wall has said that Avery Bradley defends him the best. Bradley is one of the most reliable on-ball defenders in the game right now. He worked to improve his jump shot. He just shot a career high in field goal percentage and points this past year. He's a good offensive player. Any team with cap room would love to have a guy like that on their team. Plus, Bradley will rack up boards for you. At one point in December of 2016, Avery was leading the Celtics in rebounds with 7.3 a game. He was bringing down over 7 a night at just 6 foot 2. Now the Pistons would not have traded for Avery Bradley if they did not think they could sign him long term, but any team with money that does not have a reliable two-way player already at the shooting guard spot will definitely bring Avery in for a meeting. He's just too good of a player not to. As of September 2017, the Pistons should be the favorites to re-sign him though. But Detroit's cap situation is not pretty. They have over $90 million in guaranteed money locked in for the 2018-2019 year. They're going to have to find trade partners to get rid of Reggie Jackson's and John Luer's salary. For NBA standards, Avery Bradley has been on a cheap contract, four years and 32 million was his last deal, and I'm sure he's looking to double that by next summer. I waited a little bit to drop this video because I wanted to see if Westbrook would sign his extension in August, and by the time you're watching this, he could have already signed it, but as of September 3rd, he has not given an official answer on if he will sign the team's five-year, $207 million extension offer. The length and contract would be the same if Westbrook signs the extension tomorrow or next summer. But if he waits for 2018 to sign, he will be able to have an earlier out. A Westbrook re-signing means that the Thunder will still be a relevant team for the next five years. It brings fans to the arena. It allows you to use Westbrook as a pitch for free agents. This stuff matters. After KD signed with the Warriors a year ago, it's not surprising that OKC fans are a little bit worried about a possible repeat scenario with their last star from the original Thunder team gone. The Paul George trade is a part of the sales pitch to Russ. They've now shown him that they're ready to take risks to get star players and pay the luxury tax for at least one year. And of course, the worst possible outcome, the Thunder lose both Paul George and Russell Westbrook next offseason and become one of the worst teams in the league. But I think Westbrook is going to wait until next summer to sign the extension. He'll have more flexibility and he'll be able to see what OKC's future looks like after the season. Now, I was under the belief that there's no way LeBron would take meetings with other teams in free agency for the rest of his career after the 2016 title. Even after this past year's finals loss, I was saying to myself, he's going to ride out the rest of his career in Cleveland. No way is he going to go through another season of answering free agent questions like in 2010 and 2014. But now with the Kyrie trade completed and the Cavs future past this season not looking that great, 
It's looking like LeBron is going to take those meetings. I'm unsure how many teams have the room to sign LeBron, but if there is a possibility of the potential GOAT NBA player looking for a new NBA team, this will cause many NBA front offices to open up the cap room needed. A player of this magnitude only becomes available so often and your favorite team's front office better bring him in for a meeting if they have the room. Now the rumors and reports from NBA sources are telling us that the Los Angeles Lakers are ready to go after LeBron, but rumors and reports do not add up to LeBron moving to a team without an established star currently on the roster. As you guys know, a lot can happen between now and July. We'll have to wait to see how OKC and Paul George plays out and if Lonzo Ball and Brandon Ingram can have successful years. Just yesterday, LeVar Ball said LeBron is going to the Lakers. Now obviously LeVar has no say in this, but it's an open secret that the Lakers and LeBron have a fit. I'm not going to make a prediction right now as it's way too early, but I'd expect LeBron to take a meeting with the Lakers if they even have somewhat of a positive season. Okay, Durant is not leaving, but his free agency next summer is going to be very important for the future of the Warriors, plus it would have to take several, I mean several catastrophic events from now till next June for KD to consider taking meetings with other teams. I can't even imagine what those events could be. I don't think losing in the Western Conference Finals or even the semifinals next year would make Durant consider leaving. Now, Kevin Durant could choose to take less than the max again, so the team could have more flexibility to sign other players, or he could settle on a new five-year mega deal that would put the Warriors well over the luxury tax limit. The Golden State Warriors owners are going to do whatever it takes to bring KD back, but it's going to hurt some pockets. One of the owners, Joe Lacob, said that Warriors GM Bob Myers went way over the off-season budget limit this past summer, so if Durant decides to take the larger max deal, definitely say goodbye to Patrick McCall. Once he resigns, the Warriors are going to close out this decade and enter the 2020s as one of the favorites for the title every single year. It secures the dynasty potential for Golden State. Plus, from reading interviews, he seems to really enjoy living in the Bay Area. The only two things I'm betting on here is if he decides to take the larger max or take another pay cut, I'd bet on him taking the max deal. KD's not going anywhere. There are two teams that are favorites to get Paul George next year, and that is the Lakers and the Thunder. George is from the LA area, and they have reason to believe they can sign him. Russell Westbrook is the best player Paul George has ever played with on an NBA team, and if they have a successful year, OKC is going to be confident that he will sign back with Russell. Here's what Paul George had to say about his situation in OKC and possibly making the conference finals. I'm in OKC, so hopefully me and Russ do a good enough job and make it to the conference finals and love the situation. Why not recruit someone to come build it with us? I'm open in this whole process. And here's what George had to say about the Lakers situation. It's too early for LA. It would have to be a situation where the ball gets rolling and the guys are hopping on. This guy commits, that guy commits. Now there's a team forming. It has to be like that. What do you guys think? Like We have to wait until the season plays out first because you can't just say, oh, he's going here, he's going here. But PG can do a lot for you. Combine his all-NBA defense with his ability to play on and off the ball on offense, he can do a lot for a team, whether that's in LA, OKC, or another NBA city. Now, Joel Embiid is the only player on my list that is a restricted free agent, and he might be the biggest question on here for obvious reasons. His health. Can you rely on him to stay healthy for a full season? Signing Joel Embiid to a contract extension is one of Philadelphia's off-season priorities. If the Sixers don't extend Embiid by the start of the season, he would play the 2017-2018 NBA season for $6.1 million, and then they can make him a restricted free agent. If he proves that his health is reliable, Philadelphia will match any offer in restricted free agency and have secured their center spot for the next five years. Embiid looked like a future MVP in those 31 games he played in, but it's smarter to wait it out until his restricted free agency. It gives the Sixers one more chance to take a look at their franchise player before committing to him. The Pelicans are in a bad spot, man. Their wing players keep getting injured. Outside of AD, Drew Holiday, and DeMarcus Cousins, that's a rough team. Cousins' future is in a weird spot. If it becomes obvious that the Twin Towers duo with Anthony Davis is not working, New Orleans must get to the phones and find a team to trade with at February's trade deadline for whatever they can grab. Losing an NBA All-Star for nothing should never be an option. The Pelicans cannot go into next year's summer with Cousins gone and nothing to show for it. 
it would make Anthony Davis's case for leaving during free agency much stronger. But everything could work out in the end for New Orleans. They can make the playoffs, AD and Cousins will be successful together, or it could be another disappointing year in New Orleans. We do not know. DeMarcus Cousins' free agency is one of the reasons why I cannot wait for the regular season. Next summer, DeAndre Jordan has a player option, and if the Clippers have a rough season, there are going to be teams pitching that they can help DeAndre compete in the playoffs again. DeAndre is still one of the better rim protectors in the league, which is very important to have on your team if you don't have quality perimeter defenders. The free agent market for centers who can't shoot free throws or three-point shots isn't that great, but for someone like DeAndre, who is elite at finishing at the rim, he can bring down rebounds and can defend the rim, he will be valuable for many NBA teams who have the space for a center. One underrated thing about DeAndre is that he will stay healthy. He has played over 77 games every single year since 2012, so it's good for teams to know a double-double guy will be able to stay on the court for almost the entire year. And the last player on the list is Chris Paul. He's going to be 33 by next summer, and his age is somewhat starting to show, but he's still one of the better floor generals in the league. He's a quality defender and an efficient shooter. It will be absolutely insane if he leaves next summer after setting up a trade to Houston. But as I said multiple times in this video, a lot of things can change from now till July. One or more teams will bring him in if there are reports that Chris Paul is looking to go somewhere else. But when you just think about it, CP3 did not pass up a five-year max deal this summer to play in Houston for one season. He probably isn't going anywhere. And that is it for 10 NBA free agents that are going to make some noise next summer. There's going to be a lot of craziness next NBA offseason. I'm probably going to make a video for 10 underrated free agents next summer, like some younger players. And again, if you made it this far to the video, shout out to you. So I'll see you guys in my next video.